G'day everybody, Nick Dingle here for another Microsoft Word tutorial video. This time we are looking at formatting text. So we are specifically sitting on the home tab and we are specifically focusing on this little font group right here. Okay, a lot of you have probably used this stuff before. A lot of you have probably, I suppose, used every single button on here before. But I'm going to delve into every single button as closely as I can. And I'm also going to look at this little rollout guy. Okay, I'll talk about that in just a moment. So. First things first, I've got all this text, it's all pretty boring, I need to format the crap out of it to make it look a lot better. Well, we're going to be using a lot of that selecting and selecting text that we did in the previous video, and we're basically going to be highlighting parts of text and applying it by clicking on different things up here. There's a second way that you can do that, and I'll show you that later on. But for the moment, I've got pre-written text, and I need to format it. Now, one thing I quickly want to talk about is a lot of people think that a font is what the text looks like. So for instance, my current font is set to Calibri. Okay, the Calibri is actually not just a font. It is a font face. Okay, it is the face of the font. It's what it looks like. Okay, font is actually everything. It's the size of it. It's the style of it. It's the color of it. It's the face of it. Heaps of different things. So the font itself includes all of this, not just the type of the text, that's the font face. But let's do that quickly. To change the font face, there's a couple of ways we can do it. We can just click on the drop down, find what we like, click on it, and off you go. The second way we can do it is we can actually click in the box and actually type in a name if we know what we want. Let's say I know I want Courier New. Just type in the first couple of letters and you see it's already suggested what I want. If that's what I want, I'm simply gonna press the enter key on the keyboard and then I'll set it to my text. So again, click on it, type in the first couple letters, so T-I-M for Times New Roman, it's already predicted it, press enter, and it's on Times New Roman. Now I'm going to set this to, let's go something a little bit fancy, let's go to, no I don't like that one, nope, don't like that one, what's that? All right, that pretty damn fancy, but I can't read a single word of it. That's because it's too bloody small. So I'm going to increase the size. Again, I can click the drop down here and I can just click on different things. 24. Not bad. It can go higher than that. 72. Bit too big. Let's say 48. Not too bad at all. So one thing that I will quickly tell you about is right now you can see it's maxing out at 72 and there's a lot of numbers missing in between. That's because these are just suggested numbers. These aren't just the numbers you can have. A lot of people get trapped with that. A lot of people think that 72 is as high as you can go and 8 is as small as you can go. No, it's not. So let me highlight this again. I can actually go 102 just by typing it in like I did over here and pressing the enter key. 500. Maybe that's slightly too large. Okay, I can even go size nine if I'd like. That's actually in between the eight and the 10. So 13's not there. So let's type in 13 and press enter. So these numbers exist. You just have to use them manually. Okay, I'm gonna set to 48 because I think that's a really good in between size. Okay, and as some people know, you can actually use these two icons to increase the font size and decrease the font size. I actually use these a lot because I really like them. They're a fantastic little selection. Okay, that's all about the size and the font face. So the next thing that you've got across here is the case. So the case is, is it a capital or is it a lowercase? Okay, and what you can do is you can actually use a sentence case. So that means it's going to put a capital at the start and make everything lowercase that should be lowercase not including nouns, it will actually capitalize nouns for you. All right, I can actually set it all to lowercase, so it looks a little bit weird because I haven't got a capital W on there. I can set it to uppercase, whoa, that's really hard to read. I can go to capitalize each word. That's not too bad, that's good for headings. And then I could toggle case. So what toggle case does is it makes the exact opposite. So let's go, Sentence case, so you'll see I've got a capital W and everything is lowercase. If I go toggle case, little W, everything else is big. Well, actually, I could do capitalize each word, toggle case. That looks really weird. 
Yep, well, anyway, I think you get the point of that one there. Let's go back to a sentence case, because that just looks so much more normal. And then finally, you've got on the top, clear all formatting, which I showed in the previous video. If you click that, any settings over here are going to be reverted back to normal. All right, and normal is dictated by this. And I'm not going to go into detail what it is, but if you click that, it's the exact same as you clicking clear all formatting. But clear all formatting is just a handy one to click. Okay, undo, bring him back. I like my formatting. All right, moving along, we've got bold, italics, and underline. They're pretty damn common. Oh, and strike through. I should add him. He was always forgotten. So let's say I want to bold. Hopefully, you can click on the word and click the bold button. Okay, let's say boring. I want to italicize. So you click the I button, and he's italics. Random. I want to unline him. And there you go. Now we can actually apply multiple of those styles on one word. So I've got a bold, italic, underlined word just there by clicking all three buttons. I could do the same thing for whole sentences, not just single clicks. Strike through. Really good for keeping sentences that you want to basically exclude from the original text. All right, that's a strikeout. A strike through, it's sometimes called. What do they call this one? A strike through. Name changes all the time depending on what program you use. All right. Anyway, that's a little bit handy. The next couple here are quite interesting. A subscript and a superscript. Let's say I want to write the number 10 to the power of 2. It just says 102 right now. However, I could actually highlight that and go superscript. And all of a sudden it's become 10 to the power of 2. And you could actually do it for months. So I could go the 10th. TH and it makes a little one it's just like that the subscript is if you want it down the bottom so that could actually be 10 base 2 if you know what that is that would actually be a binary number and if you know it and you put it in the comment below you will get a tip of my hat anyway that's uh, um, subscript and superscript very important <clears throat> excuse me and then we've got the next one which is quite interesting text effects I use this a lot for headings and things. So let's use it for this guy. Let's go. Not bad. Not bad. I think that looks really, really good. Lots of default ones built in. You can actually customize the crap out of it. Okay, Microsoft have given you a lot of control over what you want it to look like. So you can have shadows, you can have underlines, you can have reflections. A shadow and a reflection don't look that good, but you get my point. I reckon this is probably one of the coolest features Microsoft have ever put into Microsoft Word because it just makes things look good quickly. I would suggest you play around with that guy a lot because he deserves a bit of attention from people. Let's go back. There we go. I'll go to that. All right. The next one is actually what you call a highlight. Okay. It's basically like a background color for text. So if I click on this and choose a color, it actually puts a color behind the text. All right. And then we can try red. Just try not black. Don't put black straight away. That happens. And you can't bloody see the text. So we'd have to change the text color, wouldn't we? <laughs> How is that for a leeway? I could choose white. Okay, we could highlight whole paragraphs. And we could change the whole thing to purple, because why not? And we can actually do gradients. Now, this is quite interesting. A gradient is a color that starts at one color and ends with another. So we could actually change it. So let's try more gradients, and let's try something really, really weird. Okay, gradient fill. Whoa, these are pretty complicated. Let's try a preset green. So you can see it's sort of light text up here, and then it gets a bit darker as it goes down. So those are your gradients just there. We can try a different color. We can try, whoop, we've got to highlight it first. Try blue. We can try rectangular. You can sort of see it's working for the majority of it. But anyway, that is a gradient text color. Probably not the nicest thing to look at. It's really good for pictures and you know, backgrounds and stuff, and just not text, unless you've got really big text. Okay, let's try that actually. Big, 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 big. 
Not bad. Not too bad at all. All right, anyway, that is the text color. That's your background color, and that's your crazy text effects. All right, the last thing that I have not shown you yet, and I think that sh everyone should know, is the rollout. If you click this little icon here, it's going to give you what's called the font dialog. Click on that. You can't click on anything else for the moment, but you've got a lot more options. It's pretty much what you see here in the font group, but in a lot of detail. So I can change the font face, I can change the font style, I can change the size. Again, you can type it in at the top if you prefer. And you've got effects. They're all pretty straightforward. Hidden is the first one you'll notice that you can change here, which you can't change up in the font group. Hidden means it's not there. Let me undo that. So that was my paragraph. Next. It just hides the words. They're still there, but they're hidden. They're entirely hidden. And in fact, it's basically we are pretending they're not there. So secret messages, anyone? Anyway, that's one thing there. The other thing is the underline style. You can actually change it to squigglies. You can change the color of the underline. I can have a red underline instead and confuse the shit out of everyone. They can probably think they're all spelling errors. Okay, so you see, I hope you get that because there's a lot of things you can do in here. I can actually go to advanced and change a lot more things about it. I'm not gonna go into these ones because they're not as interesting as the ones you see here. I'm gonna change the underline style. Let's go orange. <laughs> it's all the, all the spelling errors are coming up now. <laughs> anyway, that is pretty much it for f formatting text. All the stuff you're going to use is up here and we're going to look at the rest of these in later videos but take some time play around with all these things, different ones here try out these ones here try a double strike through I forgot about him he's another one we have in the rollout that we don't have in the others and it's really really good to try these things out we've got heaps of different text effects we can try here too anyway everybody thank you for watching like comment subscribe down the bottom I really hope and I you do something because your support means a lot to me. But I'll see you in the next video, everybody. Hope you learned something today. Catch you then. I just realized, everybody, I was about to let you go and I forgot to explain something. So what I quickly want to talk about is the second method of formatting your text. Now, I'm just going to set it back to normal. And if I start typing text, then basically it's just going to come out as regular old text. Now you can actually pre-format your text. So if I click on the bold button, or if I click on, let's say, 18 is the size, and then change the font, whatever you type in after that actually becomes the pre-formatted, um, well, pre-formatted font. Now it's gonna continue like that unless you change it otherwise. You can set it back to normal and keep going, but that's just one thing that's really, really helpful sometimes. If the whole sentence or title or paragraph is gonna be written in that style, sometimes it's just easier to set it that way and do something like this, like that. Anyway, sorry about that. I completely forgot to demonstrate that. Again, thank you for watching everybody. See you in the next video.